INEC counters the National Assembly lawmakers saying that nationwide e-transmission of results is possible. And founder of the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, Rufai Hanga, says there was an implied agreement that President Muhammad Buhari would hand over power to Bola Ahmed Tinubu in 2023. All this and more on Fox Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said it has the capacity for electronic transmission of results from remote areas of the country. And this follows several days of hostile debates and divisions on uh, both, both chambers of the National Assembly and across the country over the decision of the National Assembly on the amendment of the Electoral Act. Speaking on behalf of the Commission, INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information Voter Education Committee, Festos Okoye, said its optimism was based on the fact that its joint committee, made up of telecommunication stakeholders, had revised the system and concluded that electronic transmission of results was practicable. He added that INEC would be guided by the power granted by the Constitution and the law. Well, joining us to discuss this is Barrister Monday Ubani. He's a doctor. Uh, also joining us is Mr. Festus Okoye. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having us. Great. So uh, before I come to you, Mr. Okoye, let me just quickly go to Barrister Ubani for a translation of what the... Um, the Constitution has to say about this, but we cannot go there without referring to what happened on the floor of the National Assembly last week. It was a very rowdy session. In fact, pundits uh, and people who have analyzed the situation over and over again have said that most of the people who voted, uh, voted along the lines of ethnic um, sentiments, um, uh, of course, or, on political sentiment, party lines and all of that. But my question is, where does the interest of the average Nigeria come in in all of this? Well, well thank you. Uh, you must remember that we have come a long way in our electoral uh, uh, journey as a nation. We have had issues uh, of undue interference in our electoral process uh, by stakeholders, especially the desperate politicians who most of the times want to rig themselves into power. And stakeholders and patriots, they all came together and said, we cannot continue like this. It's better we really uh, uh, sharpen our electoral uh, uh, framework uh, to get it right, just like other nations have gotten it right with the electoral journey. And they came up with this suggestion that we must use uh, electronics uh, in uh, transmission of results. And hitherto, uh, INEC has actually deployed that technology and uh, had had a, a fair share, you know, it's something that looks uh, a bit more credible than previous elections. They had had it in uh, some several other constituencies in the country. I'm very happy that INEC uh, spokesperson in the person of my brother, Mike, is, is, is here, is a guest in this particular program. And so you will get to hear from the horses' mouth uh, what has been done by INEC uh, by deployment of uh, technology, you know, so far, even when there was no uh, legal backing. And so there was this... Uh, arrive at the conclusion that, look, the best way is for us to allow INEC to transmit a, a, a result electronically, especially where it is practicable, where, where and when practicable. So INEC has this discretionary uh, power. Where there is a network service, they will. Where there is no network service, they will use manual. That was what was agreed upon by the harmonized uh, uh, report of the Joint uh, Committee on mm -hmm. INEC. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when the matter came before the Senate last week, and that was, I think, either 16th or 15th, somebody now moved a motion to amend. And what was amendment? That INEC now that shouldn't be subjected to any other authority was said to uh, be subjected to NCC and National Assembly. They need to hear from those two bodies before INEC can transmit results electronically. And we found that that is clearly unconstitutional. 
It doesn't have any room at all within our constitutional framework because the law, the constitution itself has given uh, such a honorous power on INEC to conduct election. And in doing that, they share their power with no other body or authority. So subjecting INEC now to NCC and then to National Assembly, who is a prospective uh, uh, party in the electoral process, to be the one to approve before they can transmit results is clearly laughable. You know, something that I found out to be uh, very, you know, uh, is disdainful. It's something that nobody should ever contemplate that our lawmakers will descend so low in enacting law that, have, that violate, clearly violate the provisions of the Constitution. So that's where we have found ourselves. As, uh, to me, it's clearly a, a cheating on the part of Nigerians who felt that we should move, you know, forward. We should be talking about e-voting not even transmission of results only. We should now be talking about electronic voting because other smaller nations have actually gravitated towards technology in all the electoral you know, processes. So why are we now going backwards you know, by saying, oh, we have only 50% or less than that uh, percentage coverage, whereas INEC being, we have been told, even by, by INEC has been told uh, before now that uh, we had over 90 something percent uh, co network coverage in the entire country. So it's, it's, it was a black, a black weekend. It was a black weekend. But, 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 but don't you think, I, I just want to play the devil's advocate here, just, just out of curiosity. Do you not think that maybe the, 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 the lawmakers took this stand because of the uncertainties that come with our. Uh, electric uh, uh, power supply, uh, you know, the fact that you cannot really trust the connectivity. Um, and that's why NCC was brought into the conversation in the first instance. I mean, can we give them that benefit of doubt or should we totally just throw out the bathwater with the baby in it? No, that, 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 is, that is backward movement. The harmonized but version... It, but isn't that says, our reality, uh, doctor? I mean, no, how, how just, reliable just, is just your listen, connectivity? Just, just listen to me now. That is why the clause says where and when practicable. That has been addressed. Anywhere there is no network, INEC will resort to manual. The normalized version says where and when practicable, they should transmit. But if they cannot see any network coverage in any area, then they have to resort to manual. So that particular clause has addressed the issue of inadequacies of our basic uh, telecoms you know, structures. It has, it, has, it has addressed it. But now subjecting INEC to NCC and to National Assembly, and National Assembly members, uh, te telecom experts, you know, in the first place, who are they? They are members represent, you know, who are elected to go and uh, enact law. So what places them now in a better position now to be the one to give INEC the final approval before they can transmit results? It doesn't make any sense. So if you are playing the devil, devil's advocate, are we not saying that National Assembly members now should be the one to determine when we have network in any environment before you can transmit it, it doesn't make sense. You know? So to me, the initial harmonized version has actually addressed our deficiencies with basic infrastructure in the country. I say where and when practicable. Okay. Where and when practicable. That has addressed it. And so that amendment that violates the constitutional provision is clearly illegal and, and something that can be challenged. But I know that the president will not assent uh, to that amendment, uh, well, the only good also uh, aspect of it is that the, the state, the House of Reps, have left a room for them to come back now and actually remove this uh, uh, this particular embarrassment from that clause and agree that they must not violate the constitution because I know they will come up with something that is better and preferable to what has actually taken. You sound, uh, you uh, sound very, you sound very certain. Like you know, you said you know that the president will not accent to it. And you also say you're certain that the National Assembly or the House of Representatives would, would do something better. How does that No, no, we? They, they, they will harmonize. Because in what happened last week was that there is no harmony in that particular uh, passage of the bill. They all took different positions. So I think that within this week, or maybe when they come back from their holiday, they should be able to harmonize their position and come up with something that does not violate the Constitution. That's what I'm saying. And I think that the best option is for them to leave it the way it was couched, Whenever and wherever it is practicable, let INEC actually transmit a, a result electronically. I'm going to come back to you, Doctor, so we talk about the politics of, of you know, this particular um, act. But to you, Mr. Koye, um, 
it's interesting because it was more like a sigh of relief for Nigerians when INEC spoke up about the fact that you are capable because it seemed like an, uh, a convenient excuse coming from the National Assembly uh, that, you know, uh, INEC might not be able to gain connectivity or be able to um, have, you know, what they had prescribed earlier on before the, the tweak in, you know, the Electoral Act. Um, but but give us give us the re reasons why and what you have cited to make you certain that you can actually um, transmit these results electronically. What has been the litmus test? Well, uh, the commission has been piloting different um, electronic solutions uh, in the elect in the electoral process, and uh, uh, towards that 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 particular angle, uh, on the twenty eighth day of March, uh, twenty eighteen. Uh, there was um, a technical committee meeting uh, between the uh, NCC, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, and the, the various uh, network operators. Now, at, at that particular meeting, uh, NCC um, uh, presented the cellular network coverage map for Nigeria in both uh, hard and soft copies of 2G, uh, 3G, and 4G uh, cellular network coverage maps uh, of the country. We and they, and they displayed this. Now, after this display and after all the meetings, the consensus by all operators is that the requirements for the electronic uh, transmission of results proposed by INEC is practicable. Indeed, MTN and ATEL confirmed that they have jointly implemented similar solutions for JAM and for the Federal Iran Revenue uh, uh, Service. And so this was in, 20, in, in 2018. The issue had nothing to do with uh, coverage. The network operators raised uh, some concerns uh, uh, during that particular meeting. The first concern they raised was the issue of confidentiality, that they needed a high level of confidentiality in the operations, given the sensitivity of the, of the issues. The second issue they raised was in relation to the commercial uh, aspect of, of what they're doing, uh, to the extent that there are some blind spots in Nigeria where they have to make extra efforts uh, to cover. The third issue they raised was that they needed a very good understanding, a deeper understanding of INEX processes uh, and procedures. The fourth issue they raised relates to the issue of test running the, uh, the, the processes and doing some level of uh, uh, validation. Why the fifth issue they raised was that they needed all the, uh, both uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, the NCC, and all the telecom operators to sign what they call a non-disclosure uh, disclosure agreement okay. to enable them to uh, configure the processes and procedures uh, mm -hmm. uh, to serve the purposes of, uh, of the commission. So these were the concerns that we are raised uh, during that particular period. Now, but we have moved further in relation to the processes and procedures we are, we have since 2020 uh, we have um, uploaded the results of uh, pulling unit results into our resolving portal in 26 elections that we have uh, uh, conducted from governorship elections to senatorial elections house of representative elections and state assembly elections and one councillorship election but, in the FCT but, and these things are from sometimes from the remote river uh, remote uh, areas from riverine areas and from different areas. Uh, so the, what we are saying is that we have developed certain capacity uh, to transmit election results in Nigeria. So I'm curious. Yes, you have, because I, I really wanted to know what your testing grounds were or, you know, what made you this certain. Uh, but then you have not transmitted this result at the same pace if you were having a general elections. You, you were doing these transmissions for, you know, um, elections in certain places or by elections and governorships are just obviously in what one catchment area which is a state um, but but we're looking at a general election and we know how a general election is so you're going to obviously be simultaneously transmitting results at almost the same time for a particular location so there's going to be transmission on that network connectivity um, if you haven't done it on that large scale, when are you going to, as INEC, be able to test run it? You know, it's, it's, you see, this particular commission does not uh, rule out a particular uh, a solution uh, um, just on the spot at the moment. We have been test running and piloting 
different solutions for quite some time. And when we are doing pilots, we normally don't inform Nigerians that we are doing pilots because it's, it's a pilot. And so there's a possibility that uh, in some of the elections that you have participated in, that the commission was piloting different electronic solutions in relation to the electoral process. It mm -hmm. is only when we are sure that our processes are robust, when we are sure that we have done test run and validation, that we roll out and inform the Nigerian, the, 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 the Nigerian, the Nigerian people. Uh, so uh, we have pilot, we have um, uploaded results of pooling unit, units from riverine areas, from very difficult terrains in the riverine areas. We have pilot, um, uploaded from difficult areas in Bronu State, and we have uploaded from almost all parts of the country. So we are sure and we are confident uh, that we have the solution uh, to some of these challenges. And the network, the, the network operators have also assured us that the, what we have proposed is workable, is doable, is practicable, and we are confident that um, uh, we can uh, pull it through, even with a big election like the general election. And the cost of this is also um, going to be obviously higher than the usual. Is th does that also mean that um, the budget for INEX 2023 elections is going to be double what it was? Uh, de de definitely. You, you see, with the, the, what we are proposing is a package uh, and has four components, and these are the electronic voting systems. The first component is electronic voter register, which the commission already, already has. The second component is electronic voting machine. The third component is uh, electronic voter authentication, while the uh, fourth component is electronic transmission of results. This is a component. This is a, a, a compact component. Now, if you buy electronic voting machines, uh, the implication is that you can use it for two, three, or even four electoral cycles. But, and that obviates the point of uh, uh, printing ballot papers all the time. So initially, the cost will be high, but on, on the long run, you will see that it is more economical and it's more cost effective for the Federation. Concerns about imputing wrong numbers or wrong figures, and I mean, because it's electronically done doesn't mean that um, it's above mistakes or, you know, malfunctions here and there. And we know this, the situation of the card reader, uh, and we remember in 2019, if, if I'm not mistaken, or 2015, I beg your pardon, um, I think 2019, when President, former President Goodluck Jonathan's card reader in his um, voting ward was, uh, polling units was not working. Have all of these teething problems been addressed in its entirety, or are we going to still see those issues here and there and hiccups that come, uh, which also stop the elections from starting early and, and as, as soon as you should? Well, uh, I, I will address two angles to the, to the question. The first angle is that the electronic voting machine that the, uh, the commission wants to introduce uh, for the 2023 general election, uh, we have a paper, a, a paper trail uh, which will enable an audit in case there's a, any challenge relating to what has been uh, uh, transmitted uh, from the pooling unit to the registration area collection center or from the registration area collection center uh, to the local government collection uh, center. The second issue and I want to uh, address is that um, technology is dynamic. And what the commission is thinking is that we want broad powers to be given to the commission, broad powers to deepen the use of technology, broad powers to introduce relevant technology at a particular time. We do not want a situation where a particular electronic solution, a particular uh, 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 um, device will be written into the, into, into the electoral act. And that will create problem for us. So if you give us broad powers, we can improve and we can introduce relevant technology at any given time. The technology we want to use for the 2023 elections is a technology that will not only read the fingerprints, but also we read the facials. So if we are unable to read their fingerprints, we can, re we can read their facials. And the issue of um, uh, accreditation challenges will be obviated. But let me say that the introduction of electronic transmission of results or the introduction of a solution that reads your fingerprints and your facials does not mean that we will have eliminated all challenges to electoral process. No, democracy is a, a, is a work in progress. Okay. Our electoral process is a work in progress. And we keep on improving with every given election. And we keep on learning with every election we conduct. Okay, I'll come back to you. Uh, let me go back to Dr. Obani. Uh, Dr. Obani, let's talk about the politics around this act that is supposed to, uh, this bill that is supposed to become an act um, for us to be able to have free, fair and credible elections in 2023. 
Um, there have been so many stories about, let's talk about the Senate first. The fact that when it was time for voting, certain people had to use the bathroom, certain people were, in, uh, you know, were absent. And even people who governors and their constituents hoped would vote yes, voted no. Um, let, let's examine some of these senators and why they decided to take this stand. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I say you want me to tell you of those that went to the toilet uh, when it was time for them to vote, uh, and, and those who claim to be progressives, and then, you know, right, you know, in our, in our very before, even this the Bodaya, they were voting against, against uh, use of uh, technology, you know. I, I may not be able to analyze politically, you know, what really transpired, other than that I know that those that voted against uh, uh, the use of technology allowing discretionary powers to INEC were mainly APC members. And I think they received instruction to, to, to do all that. I was really scared, you know, to hear that uh, Dr. Ojo Zorkano, uh, who hails from Iberia, was now saying there is no network service in Iberia. Uh, the same thing with uh, my brother from Bruno State, uh, who is in charge of the committee on army, also saying there is no network in his own environment. But I know that these people do all manner of transaction electronically, including transfer of, of money, you know, using technology. Uh, so I see no reason why all of a sudden, suddenly, there is no network virtually in every of these uh, their constituencies. But again, my lovely sister, this is issue of governance. I, I think that these guys, they should not in any way be very proud in announcing to the entire world that in 2021, we cannot in any way boast that we have adequate network uh, coverage, you know, as a nation. It's a governance issue. And so what we think that they should be able to address that issue and say, look, why don't we uh, provide enough budget to other, the, you know, whoever, those uh, service providers to ensure adequate coverage of network all over the country. It's a, it's a, it's a governance issue. So I, I don't see them, you know, being proud, you know, telling the entire world, oh, I don't have service in my own environment. I don't have network service in my own environment. It's not a thing we should clap for them. It's a thing that we should be ashamed of, you know, in telling the entire world. Whereas other smaller nations have actually, they are boasting of almost, uh, you know, 100% uh, uh, network coverage in their in their own various countries. You know? So I'm not happy with uh, what actually transpired. So the politics of voting no and politics of voting yes, of course, we had a similar issue when PDP they were in power. They also, you know, usually take decisions that goes contrary to the to the, to the desires of Nigerians. And we are seeing it now with APC also, because I know there was an open hearing uh, before this bill now came to this stage where it is, where people made their contribution, majority of stakeholders submitted memo and then submitted uh, uh, papers and saying that this is what Nigerians require. These guys never came back to the various constituencies in order to actually hear well, the Well, you, you literally just opinion. took my question because I was going to ask that. Where is the representation in all of this? Because these beautiful, people are supposed to be a representation, uh, representation yes. on the floor, whether yes. it's the higher or upper house or the lower house. Yeah, I, I agree with you. They didn't come back to their various constituencies in order to get the opinion of uh, the, the people that elected them as to what they desire in this electoral amendment, that I bill amendment that is presently going on, only for for one of the uh, uh, people that are engaged in an argument on TVC, and that is uh, on Friday, uh, one of the members of the of the Senate who happens to be distinguished Senator Bashiru, I think he's a, a, a chief spokesperson. He was telling me uh, that I need to go to court. That if I feel offended with that amendment that has actually been carried out, you know, I should go to court. And I was telling him, I we didn't elect you to go to House in order, I mean, to the Senate in order to go and violate the Constitution. They asked me to go to court. That is not what we elected you to go and do. We elected you to go and do the right thing. And of course, you must take a feedback from us who have elected you. You don't just say, oh, because Mr. Bani is not elected, so he doesn't deserve to be here and all that. All of us cannot be in the Senate. All of us cannot be in the House. We need to also give a feedback mechanism to those who have elected. This is what we want. That is how democracy works, you know. So my take in all this is that I may not be in a position to actually analyze the political thing that took place and all that, but I think that the people who have elected these representatives are saying we want electronic transmission of results for now. 
We even want to gravitate towards using e-voting in our election nationally. We want to gravitate towards that. And these guys have no right to hold the hands of plug backwards. No, if they do, we will actually not allow that to stand. We are ready to use all our last strength using the judicial uh, intervention in order to see that this law does not stand the test of time if the president makes the mistake of assenting to it. Uh, we, I'm, I'm sorry to be less optimistic as you would want me to, but um, mm. how, how, why, why would we hope that? Um, because we always say that we would do everything in our power to stop it, and half the time we do nothing, and then, you know, it passes. We just scream and shout after a while. You know, we go back to you know, uh, same old, same old. But but as a Nigerian, as someone who has a voting power, you have a voice because your vote is your voice. What has this whole drama field week into the weekend um, taught you or opened your eyes to as concerning 2023? It opens my eyes to the fact that these people are not actually bent on uh, sanitizing the electoral process. And of course, the recruitment process, you know, is... The starting point is getting our electoral system to be right. And the suggestion of stakeholders and those who are patriots, you know, in this country, they are feeling that let's reduce the level of human intervention in our electoral process and allow technology. It's not as if we solve all our problems 100% with the use of technology, but we begin to have some level of credibility and fairness in our electoral process if we begin to deploy technology in it. And I feel that the people that can do that is people who have elected now the executive, the legislature, and all of them who are in governance, you know, must try to, you know, you know, make us make some level of movement in this electoral journey we have been backed upon. We know what happens when we allow manual system to be used. You know, the issue of manipulation, collation is an issue for us. It's not even the voting pattern, you know, system that is issue. It's issue when it comes to issue of collation of the result. After the result has been announced at each uh, polling unit, Getting those results now to, to the collection centers, you know, becomes an issue. People now falsify and do all manner of things. And we say, let's now, you know, gravitate towards use of uh, technology that will reduce the level uh, level of human intervention, you know, uh, to a barrier, to the barest minimum. But these guys are taking us backwards. So my take is that from the look of things, these guns, these guys are not bent on giving us fair and free election in 2023. And I think that Nigerians must uh, do something to really show their disapproval okay. to taking us backwards as a nation. That is what okay. I think that should happen, you know, uh, by making sure that they said no. And when we say no, those who have elected should listen to us. And if they fail to listen to us, then Nigerians must uh, take some more positive reaction that will make those to be who are in government to really know that we cannot go ahead. It can be business as usual, and that is the reality. Okay. And back to you, Mr. Koye, because we have to wrap this up. Um, yes, the National Assembly, uh, the House of Representatives is all on recess. They will come back because they seem to have the last nail. Um, uh, let's hope it's not a nail per se, but they will have to have the last say uh, as to what direction that this um, bill goes. What would be your prayer to the House of Representatives in terms of what you need to get your um, the elections in 2023 to be better? Of course, there, there are going to be several other elections before uh, the 2023, but what do you need to make sure that 2023's general election is is way better than every other one we've had? Yes, we always say, oh, when we look back at the elections, it could be it could have been a lot better. But what do we do to raise the bar? And what would be your prayer to the House of Representatives? Well, I, I believe that uh, both houses will come back and then harmonize um, their, their reports. And uh, what we are saying is that uh, the commission. Uh, should be given broad powers to deploy technology in the in the electoral process, and that these powers uh, that should be given to the commission should be in consonance and in conformity uh, with constitutional provisions and constitutional dictates, and that we we keep on improving with every 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 election. If there's a possibility that we may not get everything right, but this particular commission is committed. Uh, to deepening the use of technology in the electoral process and also uh, restoring the confidence of our people mm -hmm. in, the, in the electoral process. So we pray that we should be giving broad powers uh, to deploy technology in the electoral process and also giving powers that are not in conflict with the powers already granted to the Commission by the Constitution. And that is our prayer. Well, thank you very much. Uh, First of Okoye is uh, INEC Commissioner on Voter Education and, of course, uh, Dr. Mondeo Bani.
is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you for having us. All right, great. Well, after educating you on, you know, the uh, bill, let's move on to other political matters. Yes, uh, an alleged agreement, a gentleman's agreement, that tells us who President Buhari should have handed over to. But what is a gentleman's agreement if it's not written or signed on? We'll be right back after the break.